Welcome to the global conversation. The European Union leaders are gathering to debate the long-term budget that will be managed by the European Commission. That budget includes the recovery fund to tackle the recession created by the COVID-19 pandemic. Our guest is Mario Centeno, president of the Eurogroup, that gathers informally the finance ministers of the 19 Eurozone countries. Thank you for joining us, Mr. President. Thank you for having me, Isabel. So, uh, you resigned as Finance Minister of Portugal a few days ago, and we will, you will not seek a second mandate as President of the Eurogroup that will be elected early July. Why didn't you want uh, to keep a role in fighting this crisis created by the pandemic? Well, you know, it's uh, for no specific political reason. It's just uh, the end of a cycle for me as president of the Eurogroup, as much as uh, finance minister of Portugal. Uh, I think we achieved a lot uh, during the last two years and a half. We were able to show uh, in April uh, this, this year uh, proves that the group is well uh, and uh, very much focused uh, on fighting the crisis. And uh, so it will, was kind of a natural thing for me. But it's not also due to the fact that Eurozone reform is kind of uh, not advancing much, that Eurogroup lacks some power to deliver more concrete results. We uh, achieved a lot on Greece, uh, on, on the ESM treaty reform. Uh, we also approved last October uh, the embryo uh, of a Eurozone uh, budget. That now is the basis for uh, the resilience and recovery facility proposed by the Commission. I think uh, we indeed uh, prove that the group is very important for Europe and I am very happy uh, and pleased with the results we achieved. So the Eurogroup approved three loans uh, instruments uh, worth of 540 billion euros to deal with the COVID-19 uh, impact, but it didn't generate uh, much enthusiasm. Are there any member states resorting to these instruments? There, are, there, are, there is a backstop for firms uh, with the EIB uh, and it is almost implemented and I am pretty, pretty much sure that the 200 billion worth of uh, guarantees of the EIB will be used fully. Uh, there is one for workers, uh, sure, and actually countries already uh, informed the Commission uh, of uh, their intent to use these uh, these loans uh, to uh, finance programs to support uh, employment. And then the third one, uh, which is the ESM. Um, it's it's a, again a backstop for sovereigns. Uh, what we have to evaluate at this stage is that markets uh, are reacting very, very well to all the decisions that uh, countries and the European Union uh, are taking. Um, there's plenty of liquidity, uh, no difficulties in, in market access. But the European Central Bank increased its program uh, to buy public debt by 600 billion euros. So you are uh, very confident that the markets don't expect a turmoil coming from this part of the globe. The response of the ECB is part of uh, our collective response. Uh, it's uh, since the beginning of the crisis, uh, the, the ECB programs add up to almost 1.5 trillion euros. Uh, it's a very strong response uh, and it's one that is much needed to prevent fragmentation. That's why I've been uh, telling everybody that Europe is back and Europe is back uh, on the basis of a true European plan. Regarding uh, the recovery plan, uh, presented by European Commission, you said, and I quote, there should be a focus on the quality of the expenditure. But there is a heated debate about the balance between grants and loans. In the end, uh, what will be doable in terms of convincing member states, the famous frugal ones and the more expansionist ones? The negotiation is going to be tough, that's for sure but there is a possible common ground uh, for the bargaining to occur. It's going to be a mixture uh, of uh, loans and grants, for sure. That's the proposal of the Commission anyway. Um, but we must be uh, focused uh, on, the, on two things. First, there is conditionality. This is not to finance uh, past expenditure, current permanent transfers. This is 
to finance a structural change in Europe related with the green economy and digital. This is very important and we must stay focused on that. And the second idea is that there is no troika like uh, conditionality. So we are stronger because we are flexible and united. We are at the departure point, but how to make sure that the countries will stick to those conditions in their national programs in one or two years' time, when political conditions might even change, there will be elections? Uh, I, 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 I keep repeating so people remember that, that we had the most coordinated ever fiscal stances across Europe uh, in the pre-COVID uh, uh, moment. So. Commitments were uh, being applied, they were being followed, risk reduction was a reality for already more than five years. The coordination of these recovery plans uh, is uh, a matter for the Commission, but I also uh, am pretty much confident that the Eurogroup will also uh, continue to play a very important role uh, on the economic policy coordination uh, in the Euro area. Do you think that any time soon and in a couple of years they will accept to have common uh, European taxes to repay the common debt? Uh, we now uh, have uh, a possibility, an historical possibility, uh, to uh, temporarily um, issue common debt uh, by the, the European Commission, uh, which will be, of course, paid in fully. Uh, in, the, in, in, in a, a long uh, given maturity that is to be defined, maybe 20 years, maybe 30 years. Uh, it makes all sense from an economic and political perspective to match uh, these um, debt issuance with own resources. So we must uh, work together uh, to find these uh, new sources um, of uh, revenue for the, for the uh, union as a whole. And there's one very interesting uh, idea, which is to connect these resources precisely with the pillars uh, of the recovery process, meaning digitalization and the green economy. So if we connect th those two parts uh, of, the, of our story, uh, it's much easier to, to, to make it uh, understandable by European citizens. Thank you very much, Mario Centeno, president of the Eurogroup. Thank you, Isabel.